Hey, 42 here. Despite the fact that 97% of people agree with the common statement that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, only 44% of people actually eat it on a regular basis. The majority of the global population skips breakfast. But is there any truth to the old adage? Is breakfast the most important meal? And what happens to your body and your mind when you give it a miss? The word breakfast literally means to break a fast, since you are breaking your overnight fast. It's easy to see why breakfast is the most commonly skipped meal of the day. Most people have very little free time in the morning and would rather catch an extra 15 minutes of shut eye before work than stand up in front of a toaster struggling to keep their eyes open. Also, your body simply isn't designed to eat within an hour of waking up. Your metabolism is like a fire, you have to stoke it with more wood every few hours to keep it running. Overnight your metabolism mostly shuts down, so when you wake up it's confused and lags behind the rest of your body. Eating breakfast actually kickstarts your metabolism again, and it will continue running until you go to sleep that night. Although it's important to note that breakfast doesn't speed up your metabolism, there's an important difference. But if you don't kickstart it with food, it will take between 1 to 2 hours for it to slowly wake up naturally. That's why you usually don't get the message that you're pretty darn hungry until a couple of hours after waking up, despite having last consumed a meal over 9 hours ago. The saying, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, has shady origins. It comes from a 1917 edition of Good Health magazine, in which it says, in many ways, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. The thing is, the magazine was edited by John Harvey Kellogg, the brother of Kellogg's founder, Will Keith Kellogg. Kellogg's entire marketing campaign was centred around promoting breakfast cereals as the healthiest way to start your day and the most essential food you can consume. Furthermore, before the 20th century, dedicated breakfast foods didn't even exist. It's only due to marketing that they do now. Pre-20th century, for thousands of years, humans usually ate the remains of whatever was left over from the night before. Kellogg's bravest claim was that eating their cereal helps you to lose weight. And that idea has never actually disappeared from the public consciousness. Extravagant weight loss claims are still used to sell cereals around the world today. So, what's the truth? Can you really shit a stone in a week by eating magical toasted flakes? The largest ever clinical study on the relationship between weight loss and breakfast consumption was carried out in 2014 on 309 participants. Half of them were asked to skip breakfast and the rest to eat it. The study concluded that contrary to widely espoused views, this had no discernible effect on weight loss in free living adults who were attempting to lose weight. There was absolutely no difference in weight loss between those who ate breakfast every morning and those who skipped it altogether. There have been many smaller studies, however, the BMJ took 13 leading randomised trials on this topic and amalgamated the results. Overall, they concluded that eating any kind of breakfast on a daily basis does not lead to weight loss. In fact, they found on average breakfast eaters weighed ever so slightly more than breakfast skippers. But the weight disparity was not significant enough to throw all your eggs and cornflakes out of the window, and the trials all ran for a very short time and didn't pay enough attention to the type of breakfast that people were eating. None of the studies factored in whether breakfast eaters ate sugary cereal every morning or whole wheat toast and fruit, which really dampens the reliability of the results. Ultimately, whether or not you should skip breakfast is a personal choice that will have different outcomes for different people. Depending on your age, weight, genetics, what time of day you wake up and what you do after waking, skipping breakfast could be either beneficial or detrimental to your health and well-being. The general doctor recommended rule of thumb is really quite simple. If you're hungry, eat. Hunger is your body's way of telling you it needs sustenance, so you would be wise not to ignore it. However, that's a very simplistic answer. Let's take a look at some science-backed pros and cons 
of skipping breakfast. Starting with the pros. We've established that skipping breakfast every day will not help most people to lose weight, as people tend to overeat later in the day to compensate. However, a team at Cornell University believes that skipping breakfast only a couple of times per week could be a genuinely effective weight loss strategy. During their studies, they found that people who usually eat breakfast tend not to overcompensate when they miss it. So, if you could get used to the idea of only eating breakfast, say, four days per week, then skipping it for three days, you are less likely to gorge on junk food later in the morning than if you were to go nuclear and skip breakfast on all seven days. The Cornell team found that when normal breakfast eaters skipped breakfast intermittently, they ended up consuming, on average, 400 fewer calories per day on the days without any breakfast, which is just the right amount of calorie deficit for safe and steady weight loss. Also, intermittent fasting triggers a biological response called autophagy, which is a phase during which the body clears away any DNA debris and repairs cellular damage. So, skipping breakfast now and then could help lower the risk of age-related diseases. But what about the cons of skipping breakfast? Is it really worth it? Well, perhaps not. Before you consider never eating breakfast ever again, consider the following. If you happen to exert a lot of energy at your job, or if you go to the gym first thing in the morning, not eating breakfast could be a huge mistake. If you skip breakfast before physical exertion, your blood sugar levels will be at rock bottom and you'll have no energy reserves to carry you through the day. If you try to push yourself on an empty stomach, you can bring on some really nasty side effects, such as dizziness, lightheartedness, and nausea. You'll feel lethargic and able to do much less than if you had eaten. Because your focus will be impaired, you are considerably more likely to injure yourself if, for example, you're lifting heavy objects at work or weights in the gym. And if your tank gets too empty, you could end up passing out. But those of you who work at a desk job aren't getting off any easier either. Just like your muscles, your brain needs sustenance and energy to function. If you skip breakfast, your ability to concentrate and think logically will be impaired. A 2005 study tested children over three weeks. Some of them ate a healthy oatmeal-based breakfast, and some of them ate no breakfast. They were asked to complete a bunch of cognitive tasks over the three weeks. It concluded that breakfast intake enhances cognitive performance and boys and girls showed enhanced spatial memory and girls showed improved short-term memory after consuming oatmeal. But if you are a religious breakfast skipper, poor concentration and low energy levels could be the least of your worries. A very recent study at the University of Iowa of over 6,500 Americans concluded that people who never eat breakfast are 87% more likely to die of cardiovascular disease than breakfast eaters. But there's a large caveat here. It could just be true that people who eat breakfast tend to take much better care of themselves in every aspect of their life. Research has found that people who eat breakfast every day are less likely to smoke, they drink less, and overall they have healthier diets than breakfast skippers. They consume far more fiber and nutrients in their diet. Also, eating breakfast presents one more opportunity each day for an individual to consume vital fiber and vitamins to meet their recommended daily amount, which can only have a positive impact on one's health. That is assuming said breakfast consists of healthy foods. There's obviously a huge difference between starting your day on a bowl of muesli and bananas compared to a tower of pancakes and syrup. In summary, the idea that breakfast is some sort of special meal with magical properties, such as speeding up your metabolism or causing you to burn more calories throughout the day are no more than myths. Many modern studies have disproved these commonly espoused fallacies. Everyone is different. And for some people who may not feel hungry until 12 o'clock, then skipping breakfast could be beneficial. Because at the end of the day, breakfast is just another meal like any other. And its only purpose is to curb hunger and intake some healthy proteins, fiber, and nutrients. 
So if you're hungry, then eat breakfast. If you're not, then don't. It really is as simple as that. Just try to choose a healthier breakfast if you can, and if you are hell-bent on skipping breakfast even though you are hungry for it, then the research points to the fact that the healthiest way to do that is by intermittent fasting. By only skipping breakfast some days of the week, your body will maintain its usual metabolic circadian rhythm, enabling you to lose more weight than if you skip it seven days per week. But for me, there's another obvious con to skipping breakfast. It can be damaging to the emotional health of an individual and relationships. In a world where people are increasingly interacting with each other less and less in real life, preferring to bury their heads in smartphones, I think for a family or even a couple to share breakfast together is truly a crucial moment each day to develop and maintain healthy relationships. And it can be an essential positive tool for the social development of children as they grow up. No matter how rushed we all are in the modern world, we should all try to make time to take 30 minutes out of our day and enjoy some bacon and eggs. And who knows, you may feel a whole lot better for doing so. Thanks for watching. I've just launched my first book which I'm crowdfunding through Unbound Publishing. It's called Sticker Flag in It, a thousand years of bizarre history from Britain and beyond. If you want to get your hands on a first edition signed copy, then head on over to Unbound, the link's in the description, and order yours today. Thank you.